Hey, this is Kendrick at worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about antidepressants. So we've used a lot of different substances to treat depression over time. Tricyclics are kind of the classic one. And uh, I use the mnemonic Andy. Think of a little boy named Andy on a tricycle. And uh, so the A stands for amitriptyline, the N for nortriptyline, the D for desipramine, and the I for imipramine. And then we move on to the uh, SSRIs and the SNRIs. So uh, this one takes a little bit of imagination, but I think of the SS as standing for so sexy, and the SN as standing for so not. So the so sexy category, those are the ones with the freaking fabulous pecs. So for our FF pecs, we're going to think of uh, fluoxetine, uh, fluvoxamine, and paroxetine, acetylopram, cytolopram, and uh, sertraline. For the so not sexy, the, uh, those are the people who sit around and watch DVDs. So you think of... Uh, Desvenlafaxine, venlafaxine, and duloxetine. Should have added milnasopran in there somewhere, but I forgot them. So think about, uh, let's see, DVDM. No, I can't work that in on the fly. Over to the um, MAOI inhibitors, or the MAOIs, I mean, uh, I think of PDs. Uh, so uh, this one takes some imagination too, but think of some some parrots, all named Petey, uh, in Maui, and uh, and that gives us our, our PTS. The P stands for phenylzine, uh, the T for uh, tranylcypramine, and the S for selegiline. And then we move on to the atypicals, and I think uh, it would be very atypical to have a, a TV channel called BM TV or bowel movement television. So uh, B standing for bupropion. Uh, bupropion. I always add an extra R in there. And uh, the M for uh, mirtazapine, the T for trazodone, and the V for venlafaxine. And then the mood stabilizers. I don't have a mnemonic for this. LVC. Uh, let's see, that's going to stand for uh, lithium, uh, valproate, and carbamazepine. I think we could probably add uh, uh, lamotrigine in there too. But we're actually really only going to talk about four of these categories here today. We're going to talk about tricyclics, SSRIs, uh, the MAOIs, and the atypicals. And so the TCAs, remember that's ANDI, amitriptyline, nortriptyline, Desipramine and imipramine. These are going to be used for uh, depression and anxiety. Pretty much all these are going to be used for depression anxiety, and anxiety, except maybe, I don't know if you use the atypicals really for anxiety, but, uh, but depression for all these categories and anxiety basically for, for all of them too. You also these, use these for chronic pain and for migraines. And then uh, amitriptyline has been used for uh, for aneurysis. So, so people who wet the bed um, can use uh, can use amitriptyline. Let me make sure that that's what uh, the right amitriptyline. No, imipramine. Sorry. So imipramine for uh, wetting the bed for the aneurysis. For the side effects for tricyclics, I think of uh, tri-Cs, the three Cs of tri TCAs. Um, cardiac arrhythmias, this is the, this is the scary one because uh, it can kill people if they OD on it. The C in cholinergic, anticholinergic, and constipation, which actually goes in under the anticholinergic, but I need another C. So anticholinergic, we remember those. Those are the um, where everything kind of uh, kind of dries up. Um, you uh, have constipation, uh, lack of uh, 
um, your urination as well, um, lack of tearing, um, and uh, sedation are some of the big categories in, in anticholinergic. And um, this one, just remember, we don't really give these to many people anymore for depression just because of the suicide risk. So remember, people can kill themselves with uh, TCAs with not all that much of them either. I think it's like two weeks supply will kill somebody. So then we move on to the SSRIs. These are, our, uh, uh, what did we say, freaking, uh, freaking fabulous pecs. Um, so fluoxetine, fluvoxamine, paroxetine, acetylopram, citalopram, and sertraline. I don't know if you say acetalopram. I always say acetylopram and citalopram. I don't know which one uh, is right. And then sertraline. So we use these basically just for depression and anxiety. That's not true though. There's uh, we use them we use them for some other things as well. But depression and anxiety are the main categories. We don't really use it for pain like we do some of the others here. And the main side effects that you'll be tested on um, are serotonin syndrome. So you're going to have somebody show up at the emergency room with fever, myoclonus. They've got uh, mental status changes. And uh, they may ha be having some cardiovascular issues. And a lot of times in... Uh, in the uh, in the scenario, you're going to have an SSRI on board, but also maybe an MAOI, which nobody really does. But if it uh, if it were to happen, you could end up with serotonin syndrome. There's also some worry about this with St. John's Wort, because St. John's Wort kind of acts like a, like an SSRI and uh, can increase serotonin levels. You also have to worry about pulmonary hypertension with paroxetine. I'm going to back up for a second. I should have dis discussed this at the beginning. So the main, the main ways that we decide what to give for depression is based on side effects because most of these uh, are just as effective as others. There are some special cases that we'll talk about, especially with the atypicals, but in general... We're just going to kind of avoid uh, the side effects that would be most detrimental to the patient. So going back here, we're going to move on to the atypicals, which this is especially true for. So atypicals we use for depression and anxiety and sometimes for chronic pain as well. Uh, bupropion, bu bupropion is a good one. Uh, this is the Wellbutrin. You don't want to give this for somebody um, who has seizures, and uh, but you do want to give it uh, for somebody who's super worried about uh, sexual side effects. So a lot of times young couples are really worried about this, or just uh, uh, swingers in general uh, don't want to have sexual side effects. Um, so you'll avoid the bupropion in those cases. Mirtazapine for uh, people who are losing weight, you want to uh, give them mirtazapine maybe. Um, or for people who aren't sleeping well and uh, aren't eating enough, then you, you might give them mirtazapine. And then you'll avoid it in the really, really overweight people. Trazodone. Um, uh, priapism is, is fairly rare here, but it it kind of scares people um so it's not really a certain uh category of people that you avoid priapism in but some people might opt out of of taking it just because they're worried about that uh, specific side effect but a lot of times we'll uh, we'll um prescribe trazodone just for sleeping and so somebody's having a sleeping problem on top of their depression this is a good good one to go for Venlafaxine, um, just remember diastolic hypertension, uh, if you can remember it. I, I've never remembered that, but hopefully I will after this video. So the MAOIs, this is another pretty rare one for uh, you to prescribe because the side effects are just 
can be pretty bad. And uh, so, but remember this, especially for testing purposes. Uh, remember it's phenylzine, tranylcypramine, and selegiline. And these are especially helpful in atypical depression. Remember we talked about in the depression video that atypical depression is the uh, depression that's associated with instead of insomnia with hypersomnia and with uh, instead of uh, instead of um, a loss of appetite with uh, uh, they're associated with an increased appetite and also atypical depression is often associated with physical symptoms. So those might warrant MAOIs if you're uh, going to be doing primary care. I'd send send it on to somebody else. Uh, I'm not going to be prescribing MAOIs, I don't think. So the side effects. We mentioned already serotonin syndrome. If you're taking MAOIs with with some other, with a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. But uh, the big one that you'll see on tests specifically is the hypertensive crisis and uh, and this is classically the person who presents with uh, hypertension uh, and a headache after uh, eating cheese and wine those are your big sources of tyramine so uh, you'll think of a fine dining experience and uh, hypertension leads you to think about MAYs as as if people all the time are coming in not knowing what medications they take. So which one of these was the one that we avoid in epileptics? That is correct. It is bupropion. Bu bupropion. Sorry, I keep adding that R in there. Causes fever, myoclonus, mental status changes. This sounds a lot like serotonin syndrome. So you think of your SSRIs or your SNRIs. Use this one in old ladies who aren't eating. Think about mirtazapine for this one. Causes constipation, dry mouth, urinary retention. Those sound like anticholinergic side effects. So TCAs, remember the C for anticholinergic. Uh, can cause hypertensive crisis. We just talked about that one. That's the MAOIs causes diastolic hypertension oh man did I really already forget this I just said it this is paroxetine causes uh, pulmonary hypertension used for people who don't sleep well so this could be a couple of them uh, mirtazapine remember we said it was sedating but trazodone is probably the classical one that we'll use for people who aren't sleeping well Used for chronic pain, you could include TCAs in this category or some of the atypicals as well. Used for people who don't want sexual side effects. The bupropion is the one we don't have as many sexual side effects with. Contra contraindicated in eating disorders. So... Uh, why would we not want to use one of these in eating disorders? Well, because eating disorders can also be associated with seizures. So, again, we're going to do bupropion is not indicated uh, in eating disorders. Which one would be indicated in eating disorders? Mirtazapine would be a good one just because it helps people to have a, more of an appetite. Don't give this one to suicidal patients. TCAs, they can kill themselves with it. And this one is uh, often used for migraines. TCAs again, uh, like amitriptyline. All right, thank you for uh, watching the video. If you uh, want to volunteer, you can visit us at worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer. There's lots to do. Uh, you can help by uh, helping prepare these presentations, gathering information, editing, um, helping uh, to design the website, and uh, 
and there's a lot of other things to do. So uh, come visit us at worldmedicalschool.org or at least leave a comment below and let us know if there's anything that was incorrect in this video, anything that we could do better, or uh, anything that's outdated, or anything that just should have been included and wasn't. Thank you.